Welcome back, everybody. CNBC's parent company, Comcast, is getting ready to enter the streaming wars. Today, we're going to find out more about its new Peacock service during the company's investor day. Here's what we know right now. The service is scheduled to launch in April. And unlike competing services, it's going to be ad-supported. Comcast is expected to spend $2 billion over the next two years on content and marketing. We're joined right now by Jessica Reef Ehrlich. She is senior U.S. media and entertainment analyst at Bank of America Secu Securities. And Jessica, it's great to see you today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. So, what what do you want to learn today? It, well, I think it'll will be important to find out um, what the distribution will be besides Comcast, mm -hmm. um, what the content will be, of course, and what the revenue, where the revenue will come from. So we know that it will be ad supported, which is great because everybody else is behind a paywall. So we'll have premium content with advertising and a direct consumer relationship. But what else? What are the sponsorships? There will, for sure will be sponsorships. And will there be any subscription revenue? Will people be able to buy it at a footprint? So it will be interesting to hear all the different revenue streams, and hopefully we'll get a better handle on costs. You, you touched on the difference in the model. Uh, Barry Diller was with us uh, late last year and said he liked it because it was a different business model because it was ad-supported. Why, why do you think that is a distinguishing important fact? It, it's really important because you have premium video content with advertising with a direct consumer relationship. So the CPMs will be higher than other content. Um, and it's unique, and advertisers need a place to go. There's so much content, but almost all of it is ad-free. What do you think the street is expecting? Comcast got the bad news out of the way in December by saying there's $2 billion of losses over the next two years. Um, I, I think expectations are incredibly low. This will come in phases. We know that. It will launch in April. But the real push is probably behind the Olympics, and that's the secret sauce of Comcast. You have an amazing, amazing benefit in terms of distribution. You have the Olympics, which is unparalleled in terms of a, a promotional platform. And, of course, there's Comcast Symphony. Right. So you get the resources of the whole company behind it, which is really unique. In terms of cost, how much do you think that, how much do you want them to spend to be competitive relative to the fact that, obviously, Netflix is spending a small fortune, and now you have Disney spending, a, everybody's spending a small fortune? Or a big fortune, big really. Big fortune, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the spend for Comcast, I mean, for billion, Netflix, is just like $17 billion right. in cash Right, so, but, but I guess the, but, then the question is, $2 billion enough, too much, too little? It, it, look, Comcast is a conservative company. The, I think the preference would be probably to have more originals, but there's 15,000 hours of library and TV content and some really strong shows, Saturday Night Live and The Office will come back from, from Netflix. We'll see how much content gets pulled from Hulu. I think th the, the spending will probably be looked through mm -hmm. in you, the early years. Do you want them pulling a lot of content from Hulu and other places? It's important to have a really strong video offering. And, and they, the way the and world is exclusive going. video offering. Exclusive. And, it's, and it's, this is very friendly to the ecosystem, to the existing pay TV bundle. And if you're a Comcast, unfortunately, we're in New York and we can't get it, but it will obviously be really easy if you're a Comcast subscriber to toggle between different services. Um, what, what do you think of the stock? It has seen a bit of a pickup recently. Yes, but our price target is $58, which is almost 30 percent above current levels. We think there's still a long way to go. And obviously, all of these direct-to-consumer offerings, all of these new streaming platforms will only drive broadband. So you're sticking with that $58 price target because Despite the, pe the, the peacock losses, mm -hmm. we still think that the cable business is really strong. NBCU is incredibly well run, but still a lot of upside in multiple areas of the company. And expectations for Sky are pretty low. Okay. Jessica, I want to thank you for being here. Uh, I know you're attending later today, too. Yes. We'd be interested to hear what you think after, uh, after the conference.